Hello and welcome to Budget Model Railways. Sorry it's been a little bit of a gap since we've um, seen you. Um, both me and Doug have had this uh, cold flu thing and Doug's still got it a bit. And um, so, and I've been busy with a project and this is what I've been busy with. So we're still with Engage, but this is, um, there's two ways I could do this video really. One is to talk about um, what I've done here and, and it's just another Engage layout. But I think more importantly, what I finally discovered is that having really for a number of years spoken about why can't we get budget ranges for model railways? The answer is you can. Um, and the answer is this effectively is it. This is a, a few companies that if you shop around, you can do a really nice layout quite cheaply. And what starts all this really is Cato. It's this locomotive here. Um, or to be more exact, I'll, I'll just reach over. this set from which it came from. Um, it's a bit difficult to see, but there's two wagons in there and these wonderful little locos. And currently, well, I've, I've just paid as little as just under £40 for them. Um, because they're freelance, they're £10 less than the UK or German Swiss ones. But they're fabulous little locos. They run smoothly and quietly. And you're buying a loco and two wagons, and I'll get the two wagons out in a moment so you can see, for £40. Now, double O doesn't come anywhere close. It doesn't come close on price. The cheapest is Hornby at about 65 for a loco and two wagons. And that loco doesn't run as well as this, especially in a shunting environment. And then what's important here is two other things that enable us to say this is a budget concept you can do a budget model railway on very little money. And the other are these Pico wagons. So these are these kits. Um, there's quite a big range. Um, and I'm currently buying them. Um, I actually buy mine from the model railway shop on the Isle of Wight through eBay for £6.50 a wagon. Um, and what they are is they're very simple kits. So you get a body, a roof, a chassis and some wheels. And you paint them. If you, you don't have to, you could just use them as they are if you're a newbie, but you paint them up. Um, and these are relatively modern wagons which fit this kind of scenario. And as you can see, they paint and weather really rather nicely. Um, it's just black wash and brown dry wash, dry brushed on the bottom to show the rail dirt. So you get a wagon, a really good wagon for £6.50. Now, if you don't want to model, we can go back to Cato. So the black wagon there and the brown wagon, they come as pairs for £8 each. And that is less than half of what the UK wagons are. So I'm not going to get involved in the debate as to why can Cato produce this sort of thing so much cheaper than the UK outline. The point is that they can. So what that really tells us is if you want a layout and you don't have very much money or space, the answer is freelance in. They're freelance locos, although they're UK outline wagons, the Pico ones, just paint them up as you like. And the Japanese ones, the print's so small, they're just goods wagons. Um, on the end, there's another Pico uh, kit painted up. And then we've got a huge advantage in buildings. So this is about just under £8, as is that. These are this range. I'm going to try and pan down. This is the Gage Master range, uh, the old Kestrel buildings by and large, and they're very cheap. So the station building there is £5.50. It's actually their bungalow repurposed. The signal box is by Cato, £10 for two. Um, it's a wonderful building. It's pre-painted. It's got internals, and I've actually put a couple of figures in there. And again, it's only £10 for two. Two of those huts for £6. So we've now got the situation where we've got an extremely cheap locomotive and rolling stock. Very cheap buildings. I'm using Pico set track here, which again is, this is all second hand. So this is what you can do. Now, if you don't have much space, N, as we know, does provide the answer. This layout is only 29 inches by 9 inches. And it's the classic ingle nook. And there's all sorts of ways I could have made this video. And you might see it again in some more because it's also worth a video on how well the classic ingle nook works. Now, what I've done is really taken this back to its 
original roots, which is that you don't need a separate fiddle yard because all you're going to do is shunt the wagons in and out. Once you get here, you put them back and you start again. All I've done, let's see if we can get this to change. There we go. It's changed the track plan to a curve. And the advantage of the curve is it's not as long. Um, and it makes use of the depth that we've got from the siding. So it's a more efficient use of space. It also means on this board that I've got a permanently fixed controller there. So this is self-contained and ready to go. All I've got to do is plug the controller in and get the locos and rolling stock out. I haven't even used the back scene. So what I've done here, this is mounting board. So that's what picture framers use, and you can usually get the offcuts cheap from a picture framers. Painted with an emulsion tester pot, black washed and dry brushed. And that's it. Simple as that. And then I bought some graffiti stick, um, transfers just to add, if you like, a modern touch. Where there's gaps and things, I've just used stick down. Oh, it's just gimbled itself. It's got this new gizmo. Um, Doug 3D printed the gantry crane for me. The cantanary, if I've said that right, is very cheap from Kato. Six pound slots in. Um, as it's an electric loco, I decided to do that. There are people who simply, the, the pantograph on top of that logo clips off. So you can then, if you really want, call it a diesel loco. And you then don't need to go to the worry of cantanary. But I quite like it. I think it adds to the modern look. So there we go. I will do a video on the shunting of it. Um, the amazing thing is if you use the card system, so um, I'll put mine down over here somewhere, just cards. Now, the reason I use multicolored wagons is rather than trying to number wagons in some way that's unobtrusive, I can simply say blue pallet wagon, blue refrigerator wagon, yellow pallet wagon, black box wagon on a card, and I can see instantly what it is. Um, Doug worked out the combinations, but it's something like 4,000 if you've got enough wagons. Um, I can get, this has got slightly more than normal, but I can get eight wagons on here and shunt four off. And that gives you endless combinations. I got three of these locos plus one of my own 3D printed diesels. So you can run lots of variety. Um, the forklift truck and boxes. The forklift trucks from Eday Bay. The crates and boxes are from Pico. The vehicles are just what I can pick up cheap on eBay. Um, so there you go. If you don't have a great deal of room and a great deal of money, and in these times that's probably a lot of us, do think about freelance N. I was shunting for well over an hour the other night, having great fun with this. Um, it's really simple. It's a piece of melamine board. It cost really, in the scheme of things, very little to do. Certainly a fraction of what TT was going to cost me. Um, you can shunt with N, as I've shown in a recent video. Just have to be prepared to use the hand of God. So this is my take on real budget model railways. You can do a, a budget model railway if you go to this particular group of buildings, wagons, locos, N-gauge freelance. I was forgot to mention the canopy there again. Kestrel Gauge Master, £8 for two. So you can see what you're actually getting a lot of the time is enough bits potentially to make two layouts. This was just a second hand one I had lying around. Everything else, the track is on Javis Ballast Map. This is just Metcalf Card, some fencing off um, eBay again, um, and some old Ballast Map, black Ballast Map I had over the back. So as you can see, I think a very effective layout, but most importantly, really cheap. So if you're sitting there at home, I've always wanted a model railway, but I haven't got the room and I haven't got the money. Really think about this. Most of us think with a model railway that what we want is to watch trains going round. But actually, a small shunting layout will offer you a lot more enjoyment over a longer period. And this, for me, is the best way of doing it. Bear in mind that this layout in, in double O would need to be 60 inches long by 18 inches wide. Now that takes a lot more space, especially storage. Um, so yes, I am still on N and I know that most people like double O, but the reality at the moment is it's getting much harder to do double O at a budget level with wagons creeping towards 20 pound, 
cheapest locos being 40 or 50 pound and they're not as good as these locos so the best really good loco is about 60 now um a loco and two wagons is going to cost you a hundred pound whereas this is 40 pound for a loco and a couple of wagons so please if you've always wanted a model railway give this some thought and i will do some more videos on this i'll do one on it operating and i'll do one on the ingle nook um, I thought this was probably the best way of, of talking about this particular issue. Thank you as always. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you're going to get your lots of model railway done this year. Um, I will go back to double O. Doug's very interested in getting the shed up and running again, and we're doing some work on that. But just at the moment, I'm trying to look at how do we all do model railways cheap and in limited space. And for me at the moment, that means freelancing, which won't appeal to everybody. Um, but it's a remarkably fun way of doing model railways. Thanks as always. Speak to you again soon.